it's a true pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think there is not an Indian left, at least in the region where I live, who haven't heard about 5-hour energy. The question that I want, always wanted to ask you, and that's on the minds of every other Indian American here, is how does a first-generation Indian American come to a Midwest region and look into a market which is absolute mainstream American and hit on a product which is an energy drink? I look at it this way. It's, most businesses are the same. Whether you're selling um, energy products or whether any consumer products, if it's useful to people, uh, the rest is just business. So if you find something or invent something that's really useful, uh, at that point, it's really common. Whatever you're selling, the process is not that different. Uh, and our process is maybe a little bit different because we really don't have MBA type processing. We basically common sense. You know, we we look at businesses really in a simple way. You you make good stuff and you sell it. You know, instead of you know all the highfalutin words which I really don't understand, like brand uh, awareness and brand equity and you know all the fancy terminologies people use that they don't have a product. So. Uh, we, what we did was we simply, simply stick to fundamentals, which is you make a really good product, and 80% of marketing is making a really good product. And then you go out there, and if people like it, uh, they agree with you, then they buy. The rest, execution, is like any other business. Now, Silicon Valley is a little bit different sometimes because what a little I know of it, they work on a, sort of a different view of life. And you know, everybody here talks about billions. And then I found out uh, that those billions are neither revenues or profits. They're just made up numbers of what somebody's idea of a value is. Uh, our view is different. We look at products, you sell it, and you make a profit. Otherwise, you don't have a business. We don't call it a business unless you're making a profit. I agree with you 100%. But, but again, you know, there are a lot of other people who try to address the need of the market. And they have good products. But it's not just about making good products. It's how you position it, how you market it, how you relate it to the consumer. There are many, many things. Actually, you'll find most of the products that they say are good are marginal. Right? Most of the folks that come up with products usually use some kind of a gimmick. In other words, gee, let's make it pink if it's for women, or let's make, uh, you know, what's his name, famous person endorse it, or, or the products themselves are marginal. And then they say, well, no, it's a good product. Well, my question is, do you use it? If you're going to go out there and sell it, do you use it yourself? Does your family use it? And if they don't, why are you selling it? You know, so really you'll find most of the fellas that say we have great products we didn't get success is they really don't use the product. They think everybody else should. But not us. We're superior to our own product. So there's, there's, a, there's a compromise amongst people about the quality of what they sell. And quality is also misunderstood. In other words, quality starts with if the customer doesn't need it, if it doesn't provide something uh, you know that they're going to pay for. Uh, our we have different technical terms. I mean, my our technical terms are slam dunk. You know, everybody understands what that is. You got a slam dunk product, or do you have a good product? For us, we get pitched several products a week. You know? And if it's a good product, we don't go out there and sell it. It's got to be slam dunk. It's got to be where nobody will refuse it. And then you have a hard time with it. So uh, the flaw is really they don't have good products. Definition of a good product is it will do well. Now, there's some amount of execution, but I would say that if you don't have a great product, uh, any amount of execution is going to only buy you a little time. After that, everybody will figure out that this is not that good and not buy it anymore. And lastly, I'd like an anecdotal um, uh, answer from you. When you look back, what we all want to learn from you is how did you get this idea? Well, I started by um, 
Actually, I had retired uh, from my other business, and I thought, okay, retirement was very difficult. Uh, so I said, okay, if I was going to start a new business, if it doesn't have some sort of technology, then I have to work by the hour. You know, get paid by the hour. And if I have technology, then it'll, you know, it'll have residual income. So instead, there's only two ways to get technology: you either make it or find it. Uh, making it is the same as buying a lottery ticket. You know, you're just about the same amount of chance. Now, because there are thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people inventing stuff, why not go to them and find it? So that's what we did. I set up a company that looked for technology worldwide. And uh, this is one of the areas where we found something that was the base technology, and it was wonderful. So we said, okay, if it's this wonderful, I said, all right, I can sell this. Because uh, I'm not selling nonsense. I'm going to sell stuff that I use, my family likes it. That's our, our benchmark, is do I, am I going to take it? Is my family going to take it? Is it good for them? And we found it at one point. It's the base technology. Since then, it's sixth generation. But even the initial product was very good. So once you find something great, after that, it's really execution. All right. Again, thank you so much for the opportunity.